Hello, and welcome to another chapter of a tome pulled right off the shelves at the heart of the jackals. As always, I'm your skilled host, Lothran, and there's ever so much more data to relay. So let's get to it, shall we? Go grab a filling meal, settle into a cozy spot, and pay accurate attention to Fleet Part 69, Density. Alduin felt small. Impossibly small. He wandered around the barren ancient ruins of Rakavor once again, his home planet. He'd crawled and played in this inhospitable wasteland throughout his entire childhood. The fog began to settle in and he scrambled for a bit of cover, hoping that a storm wouldn't soon follow. But soon it did. The sky darkened. The Jagir came out in times like these, his mom often told him, a mighty beast of the long since gone boo. He heard a rumble in the distant thunder, and with the enveloping dark of the looming clouds, young Alduin couldn't help but run headlong toward the nearest cave for shelter. He felt the cold drops of rain strike him just as he made it into the small cavern. One of the puzzle boxes was there with him, appearing all of a sudden from a cloak of fog, as if rising out of the solid stone. Jackals had been trying to solve them for pretty much all time. Even though Alduin was good with locks, even though he'd tried thousands of times, he never got anywhere with them. He thought he heard the distant growl of a massive beast under the rumbles of thunder from the storm. He walked toward the ornate, pristine box, imagining all the riches it must contain. He built locks now to help his mum, so she didn't have to sort garbage all day just to scrounge enough to feed them both. He was learning more and more with each passing day. The man that he helped and sold all the locks Alduin made, he said there were great and powerful things in the puzzle boxes. He said once he'd opened one as a boy, and that what he'd found inside had been worth enough to buy his shop and keep him set up for several lifetimes. Alduin believed the man who taught him all about fixing locks and picking locks and showing him how the basic boo objects worked. Alduin had been so very stupid back then. Lightning struck nearby. Alduin jumped in fright. He looked at the box and it spoke to him. Free the lock. Earn the prize. Alduin leapt back. Boxes weren't supposed to talk. He found himself drawn to it anyway, walking ever closer without knowingly placing one foot in front of the other. More growling. Closer, and the growling became louder. Something larger stalking through the ruins behind him. Alduin reached for the box, his lock-picking tools already in his left hand. His right he placed into a nook in the puzzle box to keep it firmly in his grip while he explored the internal mechanism of the box, growling more and more. Free me. Alduin jabbed his pick forward, feeling something happen. The lid opened slightly, taking part of his right hand into it. But in fright, he pulled back with his left hand as the growling intensified. His right hand was stuck. The lid was pressing on his fingers. The box began to sink back into the solid stone, threatening to drag little Alduin with it. No! Alduin cried in fright. He didn't want to go. He had to stay. He had to help feed his mom. He, he had to learn stuff. He, he didn't want to die. His hand was trapped and the lid wouldn't budge. The lock disappeared beneath the cold, hard surface of the stone. He had to try something, and anything would do. Anything would be better than being dragged to his death. The ground would soon swallow him up. He had to free himself. Alduin's left hand found a heavy stone, and he knew what he must do. He could feel the flesh of his fingers on his right hand begin to tear and slice from the pressure of the puzzle box's lid. 
He was crying, tears streaking down his face. He knew the end was close. He had to help his mom. What would she do if he didn't come back home tonight? He slammed the rock on top of the lid, mashing through muscle and skin straight to bones. Ah! He cried out as the box continued to slowly descend into the malevolent stone beneath his feet. Alduin forced himself to pick up the heavy stone and use it once more, to shatter the bones of his ruined fingers. And something came through the box as he did so. He felt it pass from within, into the wounds of his hands. The growling wriggled slowly through his palm, even as Alduin mustered the necessary strength to raise the stone a final time and slam it home to sever the last remnant of his hand under the lid of the box. Boss! Boss! He heard someone calling out to him. Boss, wake up! I'm worried! Wake up! Alduin slowly shook off the chains of slumber, the gun in his hand purring as he put it to the head of the offending person, shaking him from his ancient memories. He slowly realized he was in the office, an empty bottle of booze beside him on the desk. Thorin stood on his tippy-toes nearby, the Sivon revolver purring away happily, practically begging for Alduin to pull the trigger, pressed into the soft flesh of Thorin's young neck. Alduin pulled the gun away from the boy, pushing himself off of the desk, feeling from his head to his toes like he desperately wanted to kill someone. Anyone would do. You had me real afraid right there for a minute, boss. Thorin's voice soothed the primordial beast lurking in Alduin's heart, sending it back to stalk through the depths of his mind. Are you okay, boss? You look a little distant. <sighs> yeah, um, just... Uh, I'm touchy when I'm asleep. Uh, do don't shake me awake next time. Get a stick and poke me with it from a distance. Drop it if I move at all. I'm dangerous when I'm asleep. There's been incidents. Oh, always the same dream. Over and over. If he lived for an eternity, Alduin would always dream from the same moment so long ago. Uh, uh, um, sure thing, boss. I'll, I'll remember to write it down so that I don't forget. Um, oh, oh, uh, Vildar came and found me in my apartment, and, um, they found a body, and he wants you to come see it as soon as possible. Uh, do you, do you need me to come with you? What kind of state is it in? Um, you ever seen a dead body before, kid? Oh, um, I, I, I was the one who found my mom. And I saw my dad's body and a bunch of the other miners that died with my dad. Um, and, and some kids that worked in the mines too. Uh, it, a body's not so bad, but when, when Vildar said it, um, he, he told me not, not to come. It made it, it, made it sound real scary. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I, I want to go there, boss. I don't think it's the sort of thing I should see. This kid, he's seen too much. Alduin wanted to reach out and hold Thorin to soothe the pains tying him up in knots. So that's what he did. And when Alduin was done and Thorin looked quite calm and content, Alduin asked him the tough question. It's part of the job to see the bodies, kid. You will have to see them one day. But it doesn't have to be today. You can stay here if you want, but if you want to come with me, you can. And I'll make it as easy as it can ever be, but I'll warn you. <sighs> Messy ones, they never get easy to look at. Oh, um, I, I would prefer, I mean, I would rather not go with you and see this body, boss. If that's okay. I understand, kid. Elduin ruffled the messy hair atop Thorin's head. <sighs> Tell me where to go and you can stay here. Clean the office a bit. Go through some more of the records, got it? Sure thing, boss. Um, Vildar said go to Central Power. He'll have people outside of the, the main entrance. 
um, that you should hurry up and get there as soon as possible. It's real important. Thanks, kid. Lock up after I go, all right? Alduin gathered his few things, making a note of buying a hat for the kid when he was gone, and clamping his own down on his head, exiting out the door of the office, back to the grim work that dominated his long, arduous lifetime. And so it is. Our time together has once more come to a close. I hope each and every one of you enjoyed the tale as much as I have the telling of it. As always, I've been your dedicated host, Lothran, and this was Fleet Part 69, Density, another tale right from the heart of the jackals. And now, sadly, ever so sadly, we must once again part ways. Korvoth, guide them back along the proper path, back to the safety they know all too well. Yes, sir, Lothran. Ah, the Vu are everywhere, and all the items they leave behind are not to be trifled with. Ah, a pleasant greeting and a fond farewell to each and all. Please leave all your comments, questions, and kindnesses down below. Don't let me catch a single one of you leaving any of that nasty, rude, or terrible stuff, though. You keep all that garbage to yourselves, got it? Don't you put it down there. Don't you do it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to help us learn, spread, and grow. And don't forget that we strongly encourage each and every one of you to stay safe out there. See you again tomorrow for Fleet Part 70. Cautious reminder, if you find any Vu relics, do not touch them. They will mess up your life and all of your biz. That's what they're made for, apparently. Good night and good luck. You'll need it. Bye-bye, everybody. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.